I've got a stack of boxes here. Let's turn this into a computer. So over the years of doing ClayTrader.com, one of the biggest questions we have and one of the things that we find out that new users are having problems with or struggling with is what technology do they need? What computers do they need? What monitors do they need? How do they go about getting that? What's overkill? What's not overkill? All that stuff. So today I'm going to show you how to build your own computer. We've done a lot of blog posts in the past about shopping for a new computer, about picking out components, what you need. But we never actually built a computer for you or showed you how to assemble one yourself. So today I've got this stack of components here and we're going to turn these into a computer. Um, so let me just start with what we have or what we got going here. There'll be a link to all this stuff in the description down below so you can shop for yourself, check it out um, and pick it up if you want to. But uh, starting with the bottom box here, this is our case. Just a simple Antec case, nothing special. Next step up here is going to be our motherboard. I drop stuff all over the place. This is an MSI uh, Z270M motherboard. This is our main base that our processor and everything else is going to connect to. Uh, this is that processor that I just mentioned, Core i7. This is, I don't even know what model it is, Core i7-7700K. So that's the processor. And then this box here is the heatsink for it. Typically, if you buy a processor, it's going to come with a heatsink. This one did not, so we got one of those here. This is our memory. This is 16 gig of DDR4 memory and our RAM. This is our hard drive. This is actually an M.2 hard drive. They're super tiny, super fast, super awesome. Here's our copy of Windows 10. Here is our CD drive. Yeah, you'd think we could do away without this for now, but still need one of those. And then here is our video card. This is an NVIDIA uh, Quattro K1200. This is a four output video card that will run 4K on all monitors. So let me get all this stuff unboxed and I'm gonna walk you through how to assemble it all. All right, so we got everything apart. First thing we wanna do is take these side panels off of this tower computer, because we don't need those right now. Uh, tools you're gonna to need, I have a nut driver here and I have a screwdriver. That pretty much should be it for today. So let's hope I don't have to eat those words later. We're not gonna need these till we're basically done. So I'm just gonna hopefully pull these off and set them off to the side. Now a case should come with all of the screws and whatnot that you're going to need. Typically they're taped in a little plastic bag right here inside. So I'm just going to open these, open this up and dump everything out. Just going to fold these two cables out of the way. Um, this one here is for this back case fan here. And then this guy here, I'll show you a little bit before we get started because it might be hard to see once I'm actually putting stuff together. Uh, but this is for all of your front ports. So um, this guy here is for your USB, this one is for your audio, and this one is for your buttons and your lights on the front, um, all those different little pins. Um, that's what I'll just say about those. So we'll just put those out of the way for now. On the motherboard, I'll show you where those connect to before we actually get into it. Uh, those are gonna connect down here. So this is a J audio, that means the front audio, and then USB one, USB two, so you can plug that USB pin there. And then over here, one of these taps is for the front components. It looks like it's this one here, this JSPI 11 or one. We'll have to look that up in the Oh, actually, yep, there it is. There's a pinout right there. Uh, that pinout is also in the manual, so you can look that up and find out what where the pins go where in there. So for now, I am just going to set this out of the way. We need to put in our standoffs into our case uh, for our motherboard to screw in. So I guess if I hold this in here, I can kind of see which ones I need. So I need to put in three across the top and then a bunch farther down. So we'll get those put in. Standoffs are these little guys here, and that is what we need a nut driver for. So I'm just gonna put those guys in. Okay, so unfortunately my nut driver is the wrong size. Got one of these instead.
Okay, so that's all set. I am going to get the power supply now because that's going to have to go in next. All right, so I found our power supply. Let me get that unboxed. This is just a simple 430 watt power supply. Nothing too special about it. We're not doing anything too special with this computer, so. All right, power supply. So this just screws into this top here. Some cases it may screw into the bottom. This one it screws into the top. So just gonna drop her in here like that. Grab four screws. Okay, power supply is all set. Now we can go ahead and assemble our motherboard. Put all of our components on there. Get this guy out of our way. And we're just gonna set the tower off to the side for now and bring in the motherboard. I always like to keep it on the static packaging that it comes with just so that it doesn't get screwed up while it's sitting here. So I'm just going to go ahead and this is where we're going to put the processor in now. Um, on an Intel processor, it's going to be a little different on an AMD processor, but on an Intel processor, basically this just flips up. This little plastic tab thing comes off and then this whole container flips up. Now the CPU itself is in this um, little case. We'll just pull this out. You don't want to touch the bottom of this if you can help it, just to keep your oily, nasty fingers off of it. So we're just going to take that. And there's little notches here on the side. Those actually uh, line up with this slot on here. This kind of drops in there. This folds down and then clips under like so. Uh, now we have to figure out how to put this guy on here. And it looks like we actually need to have some thermal paste. I wonder if it came with any. So it did come with a tube of thermal paste, so we're gonna need that at some point. And then also, we need to figure out how to attach this guy to the motherboard. Um, like I guess this is a little bit different model CPU fan than I usually use, so there's a few extra brackets and stuff. If you get one that comes with your motherboard, you won't have any of this stuff, or with your processor, sorry. If you won't have any of this stuff, it'll basically just clamp right on there and nothing to worry about. So it looks like we actually have to screw these little clips onto yep, these are for an amd processor we don't need those so yeah we gotta screw these little clips here and they'll lock in through here under there so let me just kind of set this where it's going to have to go and then i can get them lined up as to what holes we need to put them in so it looks like they have to go into the tightest of the holes here Those look like they line up pretty good. So now we can go ahead and put the uh, thermal paste on here. Once again, if you buy a processor that comes with a heat sink on it, you won't need to do any of this hoopla. You can basically just throw it on there. So, but that's how it is. Now we don't need to use this whole tube. We just need to get a decent amount on there and then just kind of smear it around. So it covers it all up pretty good. Just enough so that the uh, heat sink and the processor make good contact you don't need to be don't need to go overkill on this by any means I actually have a little bit too much on there but not too much that's gonna mess anything up so just go ahead and put this on here uh, with Intel processors these guys just push right through the motherboard and clip in there we go our heatsink and processor is now fully assembled so we can go ahead and put on our RAM these are labeled here. Um, every motherboard's gonna be a little bit different as to which order they put them in. So just make sure you put it into A1. Typically that's gonna be your closest to the processor slot, but not always. And then we need our M.2 card here. And we actually need a standoff for that. Oh, okay, so it's the standoff is already in the motherboard. It's just in a different slot. So I just have to move this over. There is a little screw in here that we got to pull out that we're going to use. So that's in there. Now we got to figure out a way to get this super tiny screw to go in there. <laughs> Line up. There we go. All right, so your hard drive is installed. That's pretty much it for the motherboard. Now we can go ahead and put it into the computer case itself. Oh, I lied. One more step, we gotta put the back plate in first. Pretty simple step, but kind of crucial. So 
the back plate, you just kind of set it in here like this. And it pops right in there. Now, I just gotta make sure we have the right screws to go into these standoffs. Every case is a little bit different as to which one they ask for. So, all right, looks like it's the fine threads in this case. So, let's go ahead and just drop this guy in there. Well, don't drop it, but you know what I mean. Make sure it lines up with the back plate. Make sure all of your little tabs come through here. We're good to go there. Make sure all of our standoffs line up. Yep, they all look good. I'm gonna snap it down onto those plastic ones we put in. And we go ahead and screw in all of these little screws to hold her in there. All right, we have all of our screws into the motherboard. Now I'm gonna hook up some of our fans. So let's start with the uh, back system fan here. Over here, we have a system fan number three all the way over on the right-hand side over here. So just gonna go ahead and connect it to that. That was way harder than it should've been. Okay, now I gotta hook up the CPU fan somewhere, wherever that cord is. Here we go. Uh, the connector for the CPU fan is way up here in the top right corner as well. Okay, and those are all of the fans. Now we can hook up these front ports like I talked about before. Um, it's going to be really hard to see down in there. Um, but yeah, just check. These are all labeled. So then just check your user's manual or whatever that came with the motherboard and it'll tell you how to connect all these. All right, so we got that connected. Now we can do the USB and the audio. Let's kind of lay these cords out of the way. Cut myself somewhere along the way. Um, now we can connect. Uh, let's leave the power connectors off. Now let's do the or the uh, video card first. So it came with this little uh, half height bracket on it. We need the full height bracket. So it came with that as well. We have to unscrew. All right, so now we can line it up in here. We gotta pull out this, these back panels so we can actually slide it in. This case actually has a little redundant for whatever reason, who knows why. Um, but we'll pull off both panels. Then we're gonna pull out this blank card here. That'll free up a spot for us in the back if I can get it out. There we go. Now we just open up these little clips here. It's a little locking mechanism, and then this will just slide right in there. Locks in the back, and then we screw this end back in. Put this plate back on it because we don't have any other cards to put in. And our video card is all set. Now let's go ahead and put it in our uh, CD drive. So the front of this case just snaps off and then we can pop out this little plastic bezel that's in here as a space holder, maybe. There we go, well, it broke on the way out, but whatever. Then we can snap this back in. CD drive just slides right in here. And then we'll throw a couple screws in it. Now it's got two or four, actually four hole, screw holes on both sides. Don't bother with putting all those screws in. It's just gonna be a pain if you ever take it out again later. Uh, I usually just do two on one side and that is plenty. Okay, so we're good to go there. Now let's hook up our power connections. This is our main power to the motherboard. So we'll hook that guy up. Just clips right into here. Like so. And then we have another secondary CPU power spot up there. Should be a little four pin guy. Like this guy right here. Get some of these cords untangled a little bit. 
and he goes right up here in the top right. Uh, if you don't have this guy, your computer is not going to turn on, and that's not going to make you very happy. And then we just need one of these SATA connectors, there's a whole bunch of them in here, in case you have a bunch of different drives and stuff, to hook up the CD drive. So we'll just kind of jam these in the extra CD bay to keep things a little nicer looking, a little less cluttery, airflow is a little better that way. And we'll just plug in the CD drive, if I can reach it. All right, so we're just about done. Last thing is to hook up the CD drive to the motherboard. Comes with some cables for that as well. One little SATA cable here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of SATA connections over here. This is literally the only SATA cable or connection we're gonna use, so you can pick any slot you want. Usually for the CD drives and stuff, I use the higher numbers, so this goes up to six. So I'm gonna use spot number six. Just gonna run this cable through here. Gonna plug it in, it goes right next to the power connection on the CD drive. And there you go, we're all set. That is a built computer. Uh, just throw the sides back onto it, uh, power up, and you will be able to go ahead and install your operating system. Uh, like I said, we have Windows 10 on it. You can install Linux if you want, Windows 7, whatever the heck you want to do. Um, have at it. So we are all set. If you have any other questions or if I didn't explain anything very good, please let me know. I will be happy to answer those down in the uh, comment section below. And like I said before, uh, description, I will have all of the links to all of these parts as well as some of the other blog posts that we have done in the past about building computers and what systems and stuff you want. So uh, yeah, have any questions, uh, let us know. Thanks. If you are interested in trading alongside me and other traders, then I do offer a private trading community known as the Inner Circle. So the two images that you see on the screen, the one image, if you click on it, it will take you to the Inner Circle page and give you all the details about it. The other is going to be a behind the scenes tour that I personally give so you can see exactly what you are gonna get with the subscription. So if that sounds like something that could add value to you as a trader, then go ahead, check it out, and by all means, let me know if you have any questions.